All right, I'll try to be as methodical as I can be on this video. So what I wanna talk about today is what calls I use and when to use them. The biggest thing I see that people always do is always use a mallard call, whatever it may be, whatever brand it may be. Everybody likes a different sound, everybody blows a different call, and that's okay. But the biggest thing I've noticed is people blowing this for everything. Guilty, guilty as charged, I've done the same thing myself. It's just our go-to call. We're all the same way, right? Like we're always reaching down for a mallard call. And sometimes there's obviously places where there are mainly only mallards, so that's understandable. But when you're out hunting places like the Pacific Flyway and a lot of other places have a lot of different varieties of birds and we need to remember there is other calls to use. Do calls really matter? Do we really need to blow calls? If we have the decoys out, will they still come in? If we have motion, will they come in without it? Maybe, I've done it both ways. But I just wanna go over what calls I use and when to use them and when I use them. Not necessarily, this is not necessarily an instructional video. This is not trying to tell you guys you're doing it wrong if you do it this way. I'm just putting this out there for people that are newer and maybe if you are a veteran, maybe it can give you some new ideas because I can say the harder that you try to get better, and we do that in our videos, uh, we just did a podcast talking about getting better. We always can get better, bottom line guys, and if you think you can't, then you've reached perfection and you're perfect, I would like to meet you someday. But. We all know that's not true, nobody's perfect. So what we always try to do is get better here at Mid Valley Mercenaries. We try to be better hunters, be more ethical, be kinder to people, have the right attitude. That's something we try to evolve in. That being said, I just wanna go over some of the calls that I have on my lanyard. And I wanna tell you right now, I don't have all these calls on my lanyard every single hunt. I don't like calls clinging around. I don't like them being around when I'm walking out in the marsh or wherever I'm hunting at. I basically know what refuge is gonna hold what kind of birds, and that may be more of a California out west type of thing, but we all know good and well, whether you're hunting in Washington, Kansas, Nebraska, Texas, there's certain areas that hold certain birds, dabblers, divers, right? When I know I'm gonna go hunt those areas, I set myself up for success for those specific areas. There's some places that hold mainly widgeon. There's some places that hold mainly mallards. There's some places that hold just divers, right? If you're hunting in a bay or you're hunting on the Great Lakes or you're hunting on the East Coast. I'm just gonna go over what I specifically use and when I use them. Let me preface this by saying I am in no way a great caller. I think I'm average, that's about it. I'm not gonna go out and win some competition anywhere. Those guys, I have a lot of respect for them. but. I know when to call and that's what matters. So, one thing is, I think a lot of people over call. One of the calls I use is a JJ Layers A5. I don't regret buying this call, but now I wish I did have the hybrid. Um, I think there's just a lot more flexibility and sounds that you can get. The A5 is a lot louder call, a lot stronger, and which is fine for like, we have situations where there's open water, you can really reach out there and touch them. I have the 1-340 in this one. It's a little too raspy for me now. My kind of hearing has changed. I rather copy the real thing. A lot of guys um, copy the copy, right? They hear someone else call, they copy them, but it's not a real duck. Mallards are simple. Mallards don't do all this crazy stuff. Yes, we do the highball and we reach out there and try to touch them to get their attention. But mallards don't really do that. Another channel that you can check out to, if you wanna listen just over and over and over, and I listen to them myself because they've got live footage of real birds in the timber, and uh, I, I play that, and then I quack, and I play the real bird, and I try to emulate what that bird is really doing. I just do a quack. super raspy but uh, I'm gonna change the reading this to get me more of a uh, a lighter sound but the JJ Lairs A5 Thomas is the hybrid and we love these calls they're made out here in California I've actually met the guy we've even had him on our channel but he makes incredible duck calls so that being said since we're doing mallard and then my other call that's on my lanyard and I really honestly I blow right now I blow this one a lot more is a dirt cheap call 
It is the Butt Gardner Double Nasty. You can't beat it, honestly. It has such a great sound to me. It's easy to blow, especially for a beginner. It's a, it's a double reed call. I like both. I like single reed and double reed. <laughs> Super easy to call, not putting a lot of pressure. It's not over raspy, but it's still got that rasp to it. When birds are locked up coming right into your spread and they're coming in, I just may do just a quack. Just something like that, just to keep them honed in where you're at. Uh, when they're turning, you know, call right then and use the mallard call when it's mallards and some other birds react to mallard calls. But that's, that's what I do. I just don't over get overbearing with the calling. I mean, sometimes if you have a big spread and you've got a bunch of buddies, man, light it up to get the bird's attention, you know, but that's just what I do. I'm, this video is about how I like to do it, how I do it. Doesn't mean it's the right way. Doesn't mean it's the only way. The mallard call has so many uses. Mallards are pretty much everywhere you go for the most part. And uh, I really like Butt Gardner Double Nasty Call. It's cheap, it's like 25 bucks. You can get it on Amazon and it does the job. You don't have to spend $150, $140 for a duck call uh, when you can get a $25 duck call to do the same thing. And those are just, I've been using that from the very beginning since I started duck hunting. This is the JJ Lair Spec Call. I don't, have you seen a spec call on our channel? You haven't seen it, cause it's not there. But uh, we were gonna get on some specs, we thought we had a spot, so I bought a spec call. And again, very, very amateur at this. I've watched a lot of videos, I've practiced a ton, uh, but I don't really blow them. There is places in California we can get them, I just haven't had the opportunity yet. But that is a call that I have, if I know there is gonna be geese around. All right, so the next call, that I have on my lanyard, and I will admit that this is new for this year um, because I've been too lazy the last several years to go buy one. Again, this is a Duck Commander Gadwall call. It's about the easiest call you can out there you can blow, honestly, it's it's easy. There's, there's really <laughs> no skill to it, but I wanted this call because I feel like birds react to Gadwall calls and there's some places that we hunt that have a lot of Gadwalls mixed in and what happens, I believe, is a lot of birds get used to what's around them, right? Say if a mallard, there's gadwalls there, they get used to that sound and that could draw their attention. Maybe there's a lot of till in the area, that could draw their attention. So whatever's in my spread, I'm trying to match the hatch to what's in that area, so to speak. We try to match our decoy spreads to the birds that are there. Are you wrong to blow a mallard call when you have a decoy set that is full of till? No, not at all, I'm not saying that at all. But a gadwall call, when there's gadwalls in the area, is just gonna help. You could have a guy blowing a mallard call, you can have another guy blowing teal call, and you could be the guy, maybe you can't blow a call very good, you can blow the gadwall call. That's all I'm doing. And that's just something to make it realistic and be more real. You understand what I'm saying? It's not saying that they're just gonna dump in there because you're blowing a gadwall call. I have it on my lanyard this year. Depending on where I go, this will be, this could, This sometimes this could be my only call on my lanyard because that's the majority of the birds. If I go somewhere else, maybe I'm going to another location and it's strictly mallards. I'm just gonna carry this on there. I honestly, I just don't want this kind of stuff. You know, there's nothing on this, but just calls, just bouncing around and slapping. It's like, there's no need for it. I just something else to get in the way, to hang up on your gun when you're trying to raise it. I like to specify, and that's just something I've changed as I progressed in duck hunting. Guys, if you haven't, check out the merch. We got new hats, semi-flat bill. You can curve them if you don't like that. Leather patch. Love this, my favorite hat. That's probably what I'll wear like 24 seven. I literally wear it every single day. And uh, you can check it out, midvalleyam.com. We also got hoodies and other things on there too. Last but not least, what's on my lanyard is a widgeon call. Now I've used other things. There's whistles for like teal whistles that um, Butt Gardner makes that I've used for years. Harrison, one of our good buddies, is the one that turned us on to these calls. And this guy no longer makes these. We luckily got uh, like three or four of them before he stopped doing it. And I actually seen the other day when I was in Kittles, one of our waterfowl stores up north, I seen that someone had stole this idea and they market it now, which fine, I don't think he ever, the original guy, I don't think ever patented it. This is an incredible call. 
not only will it do teal, but it does widgeon really, really good. It's the best thing I've ever heard, like the most realistic thing. Not only that, it reaches out there. Uh, just let me show you what it sounds like. So here's a widgeon. How money does that sound? And I'm telling you that pierces your ears right in here. But you get out there, it reaches out there. I have to turn the mic way down on that because it'll probably go in the red. But it's actually literally making my ears ring as I blow this for you guys. But also a teal call. Drake Mallard. So a lot of things you can do with this and get a lot of volume. Also, I've kind of used it for a whistle for Rocky. Like if I couldn't grab my whistle quick enough and this is, I already had this by my mouth, it works so don't be mad at me guys you can't get this exact one but there is a brand and i will try to like put it up in the video right here if you want this you can go look for it it's another company that makes it a little bit different whistle but it's the same concept let me know what you guys think of this video if you have disagreements if you don't agree if you do agree give it this video a thumbs up either way give it a thumbs down however you guys want to do it i'm just trying to help out and give you guys some tips i want to push you to get better to have an open mind, to listen to other people, learn calls, and when the duck season comes, don't use that time on opening day to practice. Use the whole off season, use the summer, get better at duck calling. That's what I'm constantly trying to do. I'm trying to always get better, try to figure out what the bird wants to see, look at the spreads. Let's get some Let's get some action going on in the comments, guys. I really wanna hear you out. I wanna hear maybe some tips you have for me, some advice you have for me on calling, things that you guys have seen work, and uh, let me know where you're at in the country and uh, apply that. We can all apply that to our area. Hopefully this helps you guys out, the, you new hunters. If you veteran hunters have some stuff to say, by all means, let me know down in the comments below. Give this video a thumbs up, share it around, and we'll see you guys next time.